Welcome to episode two of Cord Cutters. I'm Ryan Lawler. And I'm Janko Rutgers. And Cord Cutters, that's all about saving you money by getting rid of that cable or satellite TV subscription. So we're talking about boxes that help you do so. We're talking about content that you can find online and all that great stuff. And we're talking with our viewers, trying to get uh, more of what they're doing to cut the cord, how they're doing it. So send pictures of your setup, send video, um, send just stories of your experiences to info at newtv.com. And then we also have a Twitter account, at Cordcutter. So you can follow us there, get all the updates, but you can also communicate with us there. Okay, so uh, with that, what do we have on this week's show? Well, on this week's show, we're going to talk about the Xbox 360. Um, everybody knows about it as a gaming device, but we're going to take a look at it and ask the question, is it really good as a cord cutting device as well? We'll also be taking a look at a uh, setup of one of our viewers and finding out more about how they cut the cord. And then finally, just in time for Halloween, even scarier than your cable bill, Liz Miller is going to review a web show for us, Camera Obscura, it's a horror show. So bring the kids to bed, get some popcorn ready, and tune into Cord Cutters. <laughs> The Xbox 360 is not only great for gaming, it can also do a lot for you if you want to cut the cord. And we're going to take a look at that today in detail and see what kind of video it actually offers and brings to you in the living room. We've built one up here and you can see one of the first sources for content is the Zoom Marketplace. They have a bunch of Hollywood movies and TV shows basically for rent and for sale. They're a little more expensive than Apple and other online stores. Um, movies, if you rent one, can go up to $6 and TV shows up to $3 per episode. But what you get for that is HD and 1080p and um, 5.1 surround sound, something that Apple and others also don't offer. Let's take a look at the catalog here. There's a bunch of um, Hollywood blockbusters, Iron Man 2, uh, Robin Hood, stuff like that. But what you're really interested in, of course, again, as a card cutter is TV shows. So let's take a look at that. The catalog, honestly isn't as big. They have uh, a couple of cable shows, actually Mad Men, they have Caprica, sci-fi shows, um, Bones, stuff like that. And as I said, episodes are $3, around $3. Another source for content is ESPN3, just recently got introduced on the Xbox 360. So it's ESPN's broadband network, um, which means you can access live sports on your Xbox 360 on your big screen TV without actually paying for cable to get ESPN, which is pretty neat. Uh, it's starting up here right now. It depends, of course, again, on your connection, how long this is going to take. But you, you can see here is a couple of games that are archived. While we're taping this episode, there's no live game going on. So unfortunately, we can't show you live action right now. But we can tune in, let's say, um, here, hockey. There's one downside to this. ESPN3 has exclusive contracts with various uh, ISPs. So if you are on Comcast, you have no problems. You want to, you will get it on your Xbox 360. If you're on AT&T, you won't have a problem at all either. But if you are with a smaller ISP, uh, you might be out of luck. And so you might want to check for, before you actually um, invest in this just for ESPN3. But you can see the quality is not quite HD, uh, but it's pretty acceptable. It's it's like an SD broadcast quality essentially. Of course, a classic, almost in every device nowadays, is Netflix. And Netflix is also on the Xbox 360. They built kind of their own implementation here a little bit. Again, for this, you also need to be a Netflix subscriber, of course. So you're going to pay $9 a month or a little more, depending on your package. But then you have access to a lot of the streaming movies and streaming TV shows. So my final verdict, the Xbox 360 is a really nice device for cord cutters. On the plus side, it gets you sports content, it gets you Netflix, it gets you movies, um, and it even is going to deliver Hulu Plus next year, so you're going to have access to even more TV shows. On the minus side, it does get a little pricey. You have to pay almost $300 for the device. You also need a subscription to the Xbox Live service, which goes around 50 bucks right now per year. And then you might want to add Netflix, you might want to add Hulu Plus next year. So you're looking at a pretty hefty price tag compared to an Apple, uh, Apple TV that goes for $99 or a Roku box that's even cheaper. That being said, if you are a gamer and you're already looking to buy another gaming device or if you have already one at home maybe and you want to use it for more things than just gaming, this might be the solution for you. If you're not really into gaming, I think I would save the money and spend it elsewhere. 
Hi, welcome to Cord Cutters. I'm here with Leonora, who is a cord cutter. Um, we're here to talk about her experience. Uh, thanks for being on the show. Of course. So uh, tell me a little bit about what the experience was, how you made the decision, uh, why you decided to cut your cable. Sure. So I moved to San Francisco about three years ago, and okay. I immediately signed up with Comcast. I've always had cable growing up okay. and in college and all of the places I've lived before. So that was just an automatic decision for me. About right. six months ago, I decided that it just made, didn't make sense anymore. I was paying upwards of about $150 a month for my TV, internet, and phone at home. Okay. And there was really no way for me to get it that much smaller than that without getting rid of my DVR. Okay, okay. So it was 150. It was basically, was it just basic cable? Do you have any premium channels or? I had, like a, that? I had a little bit extra, but I didn't have premium like HBO. Most okay. of the cost was just the basic cable plus the DVR. And since I wasn't watching TV live, that was really the only thing that mm -hmm. made sense to have. Right. Did you watch anything live? Did you tune into sports or anything like that? The one like that? thing I watched was sports. I'm a pretty big sports fan. I love Seattle sports, so that was hard to watch, but I could always okay. find a few things to watch on cable, and I like to watch sports spontaneously, like the Giants and right, right. random things going on, and that is one thing that I've really missed since I got rid of my cable. Okay, so how do you deal with that? Would, how do you get your sports fix now? I tried a sling box. Uh -huh. I first got my sling box about a year ago and hooked it up to my parents' TV actually up in Seattle so I could watch Seahawks oh, games. Oh jeez, okay. So that was kind of fun for a while. It only worked about 50% of the time though. It was cutting in and out a lot, so definitely okay. not reliable. And at this point, I really just go to sports bars. Uh, how about uh, other shows? Are there things that you can't find online or things that just aren't available? I really found that I've been able to find things online eventually. Mm -hmm. There's some things that take longer. Between mm -hmm. Hulu, I buy season passes to shows that I really love, like mm -hmm. Mad Men and Gossip Girl on iTunes. So okay. I've been able to do that pretty easily. Um, I, there's really nothing that I haven't been able to find at all, but what I miss is the spontaneity of it and being able to just turn something on, you know, with those right. you often have to wait a little bit until the okay. next day or later. But it's it's not like you can just turn it on and yeah. have it in the background. You almost have to know what you're looking for, you know what you want to watch you beforehand. Do. You do, definitely, yeah. and, and I miss that. I don't know if it's a long-term solution for me. I can see down the road choosing something like a Google TV or an Apple TV, I feel like. Right now, they're just not quite at the point that I'm ready to invest. I don't know enough. It's not quite as user-friendly as I'd right. like. So right. down the road, I'm hoping to do something like that. Do you hook your computer up to your TV? I haven't yet. OK. I haven't. I, I'm just being lazy. But at some point, <laughs> at some point, I definitely want to do that because that makes sense, obviously. Well, uh, Leonora, thanks for being on the show. And thanks for spending the time with us. You're very welcome. Thanks. Shannon Miller and I'm trying to be spooky because it's almost Halloween and that means we should clearly talk about a horror web series for this week's cord cutters pick. The web series Camera Obscura began running exclusively on Daily Motion at the beginning of the month. It's got 20 episodes each packed with thrills and chills and strange creatures and a plucky young heroine using a mystical camera to try to trap them. The production design is great, but it's the creature design that really stands out. Director Drew Daywalt and his team have created an amazing assortment of demons to terrorize our young heroine, and there's something wrong going on, whoever came up with some of them, I'm just saying. But it's perfect for the Halloween season, and certainly worth checking out, especially if you're in the mood for a little scare. <laughs>